Hey, so I spent a lot of time writing boilerplate for Langchain. I'm kind of deploying and testing a bunch of different prototypes and features. Um, it's a lot of the same setup for all of them. So my question that I posed was, is there a way to have OpenAI or any of the new LLMs accomplish this for me in a way that's much faster and easier? The problem is that Langchain basically keeps changing. Langchain expression language was only introduced in August. Uh, the knowledge cutoff for a lot of these best models is much earlier than that. So there's no knowledge of how these things work actually just basically built into their knowledge base. Um, so the common way of solving that problem is through basically adding it in context. So using an approach of retrie retrieval augmented generation and few shot learning, if I combine both of those and basically pass in relevant examples of how it works along with my request, can I get it to a point where this code it outputs actually works for me? So let's see. If I request, please take a string, format it to send it to OpenAI, use Pydantic to create a schema of an expert with a name and a description, pass it to OpenAI, parse the response. Here you can see I've given it that description it's able to spit out an expert after it takes in a field where this person is an expert in quantum algorithms and hardware design. Um, so that's perfect. That's the end goal here. I'll walk through why it doesn't really work, the you know method without having any of this augmentation, um, and then why this one works and how I got it to actually kind of be more of a product so that I don't have to just generate and pass in my own examples because that wouldn't save me any time at all. So really quickly, if I were to go to GitHub Copilot and ask it to do this exact same task, give me line chain expression language, use GPT-4-1106 preview, generate a bio for an expert in a given field, output a name and description, 10 words or less, that is parsable via Pydantic, write this for me in Python. So this is what it gave me. I don't think we want to spend too much time on this, but if I you know, do swap in my own key here. We can see, you know, I kind of set up an expert bot bio here using Pydantic. Um, it uses what looks to be an outdated API here. It does some really bad parsing. It's got some validation built in. It doesn't use Langchain at all, uh, but it does kind of attempt the process. Does not work. So yeah. Right from the get-go, I can see it's it's not only you know not using Langchain, it is using OpenAI's API directly, but it looks like an outdated version. So this approach is not going to work. Um, let's take approach number two. If I just go into the playground and kind of you know experiment with this myself and use the latest model, you know I, I don't necessarily have any control of what GitHub is doing or what my prompt looks like. Um, but here, let's just assume. I'm giving it now the instructions. Use Langchain, specifically Langchain expression language. Just give me the working code. And then here, I give it the exact same instructions. And here's kind of a detailed breakdown. Accept a string, format it to send it to OpenAI. Here are the output instructions using Pydantic schema. Pass it to OpenAI, parse the response. Um, if I do that, now what it gives me, and I think I actually didn't give it a long enough maximum length here, so it got cut off, but that's not going to be our biggest concern anyway. So let's look here. It kind of set up a little bit of an issue here. It doesn't really describe what it actually wants from, from Pydantic. Uh, it's creating a prompt in just some wholly new way. It's parsing the raw response and just creating some sort of chain concept. Um, None of this actually uses Langchain. I don't think any of these are probably even re I don't think these are real. Um, this, this one might be. Uh, so it just gave me gibberish. This is not gonna be helpful. It's not gonna speed it up at all. So I showed you the final solution I had, which is let's pass in some working code examples, give it that context, run this and it will actually work. 
So now the question is, how do I actually, you know, select and generate good context for it? Uh, so the method I took is, you know, taking kind of standard approach to retrieval augmented generation, where I'm feeding it a bunch of data into a vector database, finding the most relevant ones, adding them to the context. Um, but specifically here, I'm interested because I don't want to just pass it kind of, you know, some window around something that's interesting. I really want to pass through these entire examples. So what I did is I set out and generated a bunch of different examples. This one is calling a function. This one is chaining together a bunch of different chains. Here's an example of, yeah, parsing a response using a pedantic schema. Here's an example of using retrieval augmented generation. Um, so for each of those, I give it a full working example. I describe it in some detail here about what the process is actually doing so that I can kind of, you know, interpret and actually understand what's actually going on under the hood here. I figure that might be a little bit extra helpful. Um, but I don't actually think that at this point yet, it's still going to do a very good job of giving me relevant results. Uh, the problem is if I, you know, I'm talking about a joke or something, it might think that the most relevant one is the setup for the joke, but you know, now it's going to be calling a function to do that. And maybe I was just saying, Hey, I'm going to pass in something and you generate a, and return a joke. Um, so what's interesting here is actually not the content of what I'm requesting or the content of what it's accomplishing. It's really just a couple of like really basic elements. So I created this little kind of shorthand up here that I use description of what is each of these actually doing? Creating multiple chains that work together. That's the valuable information it's pulling out of this. It's parsing results as a string. It takes an object. And so each of these is actually kind of a, the very shorthand description of what I'm using to power the similarity search. Um, so once I've created a bunch of these examples, provided my little meta description up here, now all I need to do is populate the vector database with that information. So I set up a schema here using Weaviate, which is very easy to work with, um, where I basically, you know, save the file name, the tags I've added, the code that I've added, and then the description, which is the meta description I provided. And this is actually what I'm embedding. Everything else is just here to be retrieved from the database. The description is actually the thing that I'm looking at the similarity of. So here is just basically, how do I populate the database? I'm going through and adding a bunch of this information. I need to kind of, you know, extract the information from each file so I can pass through just the code and separately pass through the description and the tags. And now, you know, run through everything that I have in my example directory and populate the database. And so if I want to confirm that it works, I can just kind of quickly query it here, return all of those big chunks of information where I'm just kind of, you know, getting a similarity, like I said, on the request that I'm making. And I can even review the distance just to make sure that it's working well. Uh, so this is basically how the querying works. Um, but when I actually demonstrate here how my chain works, um, what I'm trying to really generate at the end is exactly this. I've got a system message that has the exact right context coding examples. I have the user message of what they want to produce and ultimately give me some code at the end. So if I look at the chain that I created, that's exactly what it is. I do the setup and retrieval. So this fetches from my query collection based on my request that I'm going to pass through. And it passes through the request so that now I can create a prompt. The prompt is a system message, which is this system template I just showed with a little bit of context provided of all those code examples. And then it combines the human message. The human message is much easier. It's just the request I'm trying to make. It now queries the model that I'm interested in and parses the output. So that's really all the chain is up to. So now when I pass through my request, it'll stream back something here. And if we look at the output, Um, it looks like it is going to, it may have slightly misinterpreted this. So it did a name of the expert as opposed to the field that the experts in, but let's just assume that's correct. 
And so it looks like it creates a successful chain here where it takes the expert name, passes it through to a prompt. So the prompt now takes this prompt template, passes in the expert name, and format instructions that it used from the parser that was correctly set using Pydantic. So up here it's got the name, which is the name of the expert, and the 10 word or less description of the expert. And so now if I copy all of this and run it, once again, we should now have formatted results. Um, so this is all it actually ends up being is this you know, simple chain that retrieves the right context, appends it to my message, and you know, passes through the request. So now instead of writing all the boilerplate, I just need to think through what is my request actually trying to accomplish? You know, what am I trying to structure here? And it'll, you know, it could output all of this for me. You know, I can then go in and just kind of modify and update the templates or something, but the boilerplate is done. And so that was really my end goal of get past the problem where uh, OpenAI doesn't necessarily, or you know, whatever model I'm using doesn't have the knowledge of Langchain. Can I, with few shot learning and the retrieval, kind of coax it into having enough knowledge that it creates working code? And the answer so far seems to be yes. It's just going to be up to me to you know, provide enough examples that it actually can generate things. Uh, so to keep this up to date, I'll have to keep adding more examples. As I said, Langchain keeps changing, so the examples may even become out of date. I'll need to update those. But this seems to work better because, or better than just kind of feeding in all of the documentation and having it try to understand those bits. Because, you know, unless you have control of what that context window looks like, of what it retrieves from each one, it's either going to pick, pick out kind of like too little, too much. Um, it might kind of get similarity based on the wrong things. And so by structuring it this way, by giving and kind of controlling the balance of examples that I'm providing it, um, it does a, a much better job of doing kind of my tailored use case. Uh, so this works today. You know, things that I probably will be exploring soon, you know, at what point does it break down the number of examples that I provide? What's the cost look like? It's pretty small just to provide a little bit more context, um, but not negligible. Um, and then I think you know, the, the part that kind of requires the manual translation today is giving it a good description long form and then condensing that into this kind of short form description. So I think it'll make sense here once I have at least enough examples, you know, see if I can kind of fine tune something that would take this, automatically generate these descriptions for me um, to embed. And then at the same time, how do I then pass in the long form of request of what I actually want, have it kind of condense, pull out only the, you know, really required information, make the request and return the best results, but still kind of maintain this long form request for what I actually wanted to generate. Um, so I think that would be a, you know, a way to improve it. Obviously I could make this entire experience way more user friendly or whatnot, or maybe as opposed to outputting code here, I could just out pet the messages and you know just use my own sort of UI or even this UI to kind of make the request and customize things here. Um, so maybe it would just be a nice shorthand to basically generate the system prompt on my own. Um, and that would allow me to kind of you know cut out examples I don't want and you know have some extra control over it. But for today, this seems to work really well. I can now generate uh, really quick prototypes and finally overcome the problem of OpenAI not having enough knowledge to help generate working Langchain. Um, if you're interested, I'll post a link to the GitHub and you can go check out the code, you know, use it for yourself, share some opinions. But thanks for thanks for watching. Hope you find that helpful.